I think I've made a mistake. All offseason, I've said the college football playoff should be the goal for Missouri, but I've got a new goal for the Tigers. Let's talk about it and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. On today's program, I want to consider if the new 12-team college football playoff or even one expanded further than this, if that makes the sport basically winter madness. Plus, we finally after a million years, seemingly, have tiebreakers for the SEC championship. So I want to talk about all that. First, I want to tell you today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate College Football HC, a brand new mobile game that is completely free, no ads, and 100% playable offline. Use the promo code LOCKED ON CFB, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Begin your coaching legacy today. And I want to begin today by admitting that I think I may have erred a little bit this offseason. The more I've been thinking about how this season could play out for Mizzou football this year, I got to say, making the college football playoff a goal, making an appearance, that's the goal, is kind of what I've been saying all offseason. You know what? I think I'm going to go back on that a little bit. I think Missouri should actually shoot a tiny bit higher. I think the Tigers' goal should be to win this conference, should be to win the SEC. And as much as I want to make the playoff, obviously that would be an incredible moment. And that would be cashing in on what I think is a huge season for this program, no doubt about that. But when you really think about it, do we want to win the college football playoff or do we just want to get there? Of course you want to win the whole thing. Well, quite honestly, winning four consecutive playoff games, especially if that first round game for Missouri is not a home game at Faroe Field, well, that's really an unrealistic task, just statistically, and it would be, frankly, for any program in the country. That's just the way it is. Sort of like even the Super Bowl favorite is not going to be even money odds nine out of ten years. It's just hard to win three consecutive, four consecutive football games if you don't get that by. But of course, in this new college football world that we have, there is going to be variance. No question about that. There are going to be These are all good teams in the college football playoff. Even the group of five team will pull an upset on occasion, really March Madness is only slightly more nuts than what we're going to see probably in the college football playoff coming up. Now, granted, you're not getting the massive upsets like UMBC, Baltimore, Maryland beating Virginia, the 16 over one a few years ago. And then, by the way, the Cavaliers then won the tournament the following season. That type of upset doesn't really happen in college football, not very often anyway. But they don't really happen all that much in March Madness either. There's just a lot more opportunities for it to happen in March Madness. And, well, also in a one-game situation, basketball is a more high-variant sport than football is. But even in football, excuse me, even in basketball, even in March Madness, Usually at the end of the tournament, come the championship game, come the final four, well, more often than not, the teams you expect to be there are going to be there in some form or another. Sure, one of the teams might get knocked off, but how often do we see it? A one seed, a two seed, usually they win the whole thing. This past season was a great example of that, of course, with the two favorites of the tournament, UConn and Purdue, facing off in the national championship game. So indeed, while there will be variance in the college football playoff itself, but what about the teams who are in it? That was the big complaint during the four-team run. So if Liberty or Memphis, just to take a couple teams for example, if they emerge into a Boise State-like power, then that could get pretty static as well. It seems like Boise, for example, would have probably had at least a five, four, five-year run of being that best group of, pa- of, of group of five type team. 
So certainly the 12 team or maybe the 16 team, or if they expand to that has been rumored, well, that expands access a bit, but it's still mostly a have and have not sport. Missouri fans simply have to hope that we're among the haves at the end of the day and cashing in on this season really is the first step. So getting back to my original point, I think the Tigers need to focus on winning the SEC this year because considering Missouri's relatively favorable schedule here, considering Georgia to me is the one team that you'd probably don't want to play if you're Missouri, well, there's a chance if Missouri goes 11 and one, maybe they'll they'll skip past Georgia, one of the toughest schedules in the entire country to the point where my colleagues over at Locked On Bulldogs are saying, I'm not even sure that the Bulldogs are the biggest favorite to win the conference right now. So if the Tigers can get there, a championship is a real possibility. And I think more of a possibility, certainly than winning the national championship. So, and not only that, on top of that, you win the SEC. Now, all of a sudden you have a much more legitimate chance to win the national championship, not only because of the caliber of your season, but of course you're missing out on playing that first round game. Now you only have to win three games versus four. That could, that makes all the difference in the world. We've seen it in the NFL. Many times the teams that get the buy, well, they usually make the super bowl, win the super bowl, all that kind of thing. I expect it to be very similar in the college football playoff. So to me, multiple reasons to focus on an SEC title at this moment than simply being the 11 seed, for example, in the playoff. And finally, after a very, very long off season, Greg Sankey descended the mountain and gave us tiebreakers, the official tiebreakers in the SEC championship game to make it to the SEC championship game, I should clarify, this year. And frankly, it becomes quite clear to me why the SEC waited so long. Well, they apparently didn't want to make this an an all-off-season long type of argument because I think if you announce this in June, for example, there's definitely a lot of complaining probably over a couple of months here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring up the actual tiebreakers here for you in the SEC graphic that was put out here. So I'm not going to actually go through every single machination of these particular tiebreakers here, because frankly, if I do, once you get into all the possibilities, your head will start spinning, especially if I'm talking about them and you can't go back and reread the scenarios. So let's try to keep it as simple as possible here. So first of all, one thing you notice here is, of course, the head-to-head competition. Hey, if there's a tiebreaker between Missouri and, say, Oklahoma, for example, well, if the Tigers win that game, then clearly they're going to win that tiebreaker. But record versus all common conference opponents among the tied teams, record against highest place common conference opponent. Well, all of this is to say that, in theory, the Tigers' relatively weak schedule in the SEC could hurt them a little bit, but that is pretty far down the list of possibilities, just to, again, put it as simply as I can here. Also, scoring margin is another thing to keep in mind here. Scoring margin could be a tiebreaker, but that's even further down the list of possibilities than the schedule and its ranking, so scoring margin seems to me at least on paper here, so unlikely to come into play that I'm guessing a lot of coaches will mostly ignore this particular tiebreaker, but not all of them. There will be hurt feelings at some point this season. Somebody is going to complain about a last-second field goal that didn't need to be kicked, this, that, or the other. And then finally, well, if you get down to it at the very end and all these tiebreakers, don't actually lead to anything definitive. Well, I do like that still in 2025, we have the potential of flipping coins for a spot in Atlanta. Now, again, this is incredibly unlikely, I would say, but could you imagine it for just a second? Texas and Missouri, for instance, in a coin flip for the SEC championship, 
for a spot to play for the SEC championship. Boy, the consternation that could potentially cause. But then you think about it from the other perspective. Already people are talking about, wait a second, with the playoff, maybe we should actually want to not be in the SEC title game. Maybe we should want to skip that whole thing. I don't know. To me, the opportunity to play for a bye week and a higher seed at the very least, beyond even the championship itself, which I've gone on and on on. To me, that's still incredibly, incredibly valuable. But just in the terms of the playoff, you should be looking to win the championship anyway. So to me, that coin flip, boy, we could we could figure out real fast how much the SEC championship and playing in it still matters. And coming up, do the Tigers have new pants for the football season? Yes, it is project run play time. Plus, big time recruit Michael Fasusi makes his college decision coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about Ibotta because this time of year, a lot of people are taking vacations, of course, just before school gets back into session. Well, it's not just the travel expenses. Of course, you end up buying sunscreen, snacks for the kids. Maybe they lose their sandals or something. All that stuff adds up. Well, you know what also adds up? All the free money you're going to be in cash back. You're going to save every time you shop with Ibotta. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year on average. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the App Store or Google Play and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. College football is back, and it's not too late to catch up before the season kicks off. Locked on College Football has four in-depth previews of the SEC, ACC, Big Ten, and Big 12. In my humble opinion, I'm not just being a company man here. That's the best way, if you're a college football fan, to learn about the rest of the country because Each and every program, major program, we've got an expert voice for you. This is totally unique to our network. You get the best information possible from Locked On College Football. So subscribe, follow on YouTube, Spotify, the whole deal. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And all of you know, not only am I a fan, of course, of Ultimate College Football HC, but also I'm a player of the new College Football 25 video game. And one thing that was interesting, the latest update in that game, updated Missouri's black pants as well. Many of you remember that during LSU, the LSU game, for some reason or another, I still have never gotten totally the explanation here, but Missouri wore stripeless white pants for that game with their black tops and black helmets. Now, a lot of people didn't think that was the greatest look in the world. And now we may be looking at that look for the black pants as well. If the college football video game is indeed a hint here, because I don't know, it doesn't seem to me like that would be a, an error or a, a glitch of some sort that somehow the, the stripes on Missouri's black pants would just disappear. Now, I have to say, putting those black pants on as I did yesterday playing the video game, I got to admit, they looked pretty sharp, a a little bit less busy, a few few less stripes on the Missouri uniform. You know what? I thought it looked pretty clean, I have to admit. So maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't the stripeless pants so much. Maybe it was the white with the black that wasn't my favorite look at home for Missouri against LSU last season. And you know what? Also, you can pl- again, you can play around with all kinds of uniform combinations on said video game. And those white pants look pretty good with the white tops, too, I have to say. So again, maybe a little bit less busy on the stripes. We'll just have to see if that's something that comes to Faroe Field this fall or not. And Dallas player, Dallas area player Michael Fasusi, an offensive lineman, one of the most coveted players of the 2025 class, especially considering 
Considering the players left in the 2025 class, well, the Tigers were a finalist for Fasusi, got him on campus at least once for, for a visit, but ultimately the Tigers were not the pick. He's going to the Oklahoma Sooners. You know what? Congratulations, OU. You guys finally won a recruiting battle against Missouri. It had to happen eventually, right? A broken clock. I'm just kidding, Sooner fans. Really, I, I'm genuinely trolling there, I, I have to admit. Because to be brutally honest, to be perfectly honest, I guess, if I had a son, for example, who was an offensive line prospect, a big-time prospect like Fasusi, and he told me, Dad, really, my I know you love Missouri, but I just want to make the NFL, and I think going to OU and playing for their offensive line coach is the best way to do it. I'd have a real tough time arguing with my son's logic if he told me that. Would I be disappointed? Absolutely. But at the same time, I'd be really proud of my son as well. So the point here in bringing all of that up is, Fasusi going to Oklahoma. Texas has long been a place that Oklahoma has dominated in terms of recruiting, just that area in general. So, frankly, Fasusi going to Oklahoma makes all the sense in the world in terms of, of a decision there. Can't fault him whatsoever. Just a slight disappointment for the Missouri Tigers. However, the Tigers got a really good offensive lineman out of the state of Texas in their own right in Lamont Rogers. Of course, you've got Jack Lang on board from Eureka, Missouri. So the Tigers have a very good class of offensive linemen already. So not a huge blow, but certainly a disappointment and one to note for all you recruiting followers out there. And since I've been talking about offensive linemen here, I think it's worth bringing up Logan Reichert, who is a young man that is not going to be expected to start for Missouri this season. Hopefully no injuries on the offensive line and Reichert really won't be counted on at all. Now I expect to see him play against Murray State, by the way, because he may well be the sixth or seventh lineman, you know, the, the best guard perhaps off the bench, that type of thing at this point. But again, here's a guy who's a real, real talent just in terms of size and athleticism at that size and everything else. Well, according to Eli Drinkwitz, last year the Raytown product, Reichert, was listed at 376 pounds. And even at six foot six, that's just simply too big. At a certain point, yes, you want 300 plus pound type of lineman in the SEC. But obviously, there's the law of diminishing returns. You can just simply be too big to move side to side. Well, again, according to Drinkwitz, he's now 344 pounds. He's moving better than he's ever moved before. He's one of the fastest, most explosive offensive linemen we've had. So even at 6'6", 344, for him to be saying he's one of the fastest, most explosive linemen we've had, Wow, I cannot wait to see what the red shirt freshman Reichert looks like in the future. And again, kind of a point I've made for a long time about linemen. I'd much rather have a guy who I need to take off the bad weight. As like maybe a guy's a little bit too big that I feel like I can slim down a little bit. I'd much rather have that guy than a guy who's maybe 250 pounds in high school that I need to put on. 50 pounds of weight on because inevitably you can't put on 50 pounds of muscle. Some of that's going to be bad weight. And quite simply, not everyone is meant to walk around the earth being 320 pounds. For some guys, you, you can be that weight, but it's going to be bad for your health, bad for your knees and joints and all that kind of stuff. So to me, the guys like Logan Reichert, who are meant to be large human beings, there just aren't that many of them, especially guys who are as athletic and, and fast as Reichert potentially is and, and currently is. Well, those guys just don't come around very often. So be patient with them, with them when you get them. And I think year three in the program in 2025, I think Reichert is going to be a heck of a player for the Tigers. I really do. And coming up, I want to talk about Brady Cook's interceptions here in fall camp, or lack thereof, and what all that means, my philosophy on pushing the envelope in camp. But first, hey, Locked On Mizzou fans, I want to take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you're going to love as much as I do. It's Ultimate 
college football HC. In this amazing game and simulation, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach and lead your program to glory. Can you actually imagine being the head coach of the Tigers? Well, from recruiting players and hiring your staff to overseeing training camps and handling scholarships, you control every detail. It's all in your hands. Can you handle the pressure? And here's what I really love about the game. You are responsible for calling offensive plays during the game. So your strategy will not only determine the success of your season, will also shape the future and legacy of your program. Quite honestly, I love that it's offense only in terms of play calling, by the way. I like playing defense in video games, but the actual X's and O's part of it, just not as interesting. So I think in this strategy game, to me, this works out absolutely perfectly for my experience. And of course, we have a special offer for Locked On Mizzou fans. Use the promo code LOCKEDONCFB, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost for your program. Make sure to take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. Download the game. Just visit ultimate-cfb.com. That's ultimate-cfb.com, or look it up in the app stores. Ultimate College Football HC, begin your coaching legacy today. And as much as, well, every Locked On Mizzou host knows that quarterback talk gets a lot of listeners and viewers, I'll be honest there, I haven't had, hasn't been much to talk about with Brady Cook this offseason. I think that's a that's obviously a good thing. Last season, all the talk was, hey, is Brady Cook good enough to be the Missouri starting quarterback or not? And a lot of people obviously were split on that particular thing. So let's talk a little bit about Brady Cook here this offseason. Drinkwitz said his consistency and decision-making, I think the first two days we had some red zone turnovers that he made that were part of maturing and he really hasn't made those decisions moving forward. I don't think he turned the ball over in one of the two scrimmages, including the two-minute drill where you have to aggressively try to score. So that's been a good theme moving forward. Now, from my perspective, the number of interceptions that you throw in training camp, if you follow the NFL, this is something that is more easily counted up and seen because, well, their training camps and practices are a lot more open to the media. So I'm old enough to remember when Patrick Mahomes was his, in his first training camp as a starter for the Chiefs. Well, a lot of the talk was, wow, he's throwing a lot of interceptions in practice. Well, here's the thing, folks. Again, the word is practice. Camp interceptions mean absolutely nothing. And in fact, if Brady Cook has only thrown two interceptions all of fall camp, this is going to seem really counterintuitive. I'd almost like to see him throw more than that. Now, here's the thing. I'm not there, so, so what do I know, first of all, in terms of the number of interceptions? The point here is you need to push the envelope in practice as a quarterback. Find what the line is. And by the way, step over it, too. So you, that, that's the only way you truly find out what the line is as a quarterback. In other words, yes, it'd be fantastic if every single time Brady Cook drops back to pass, he has a clean pocket, and his first read runs wide open. But of course, that's not going to happen all the time, especially as Missouri's opponents get better and better and better. So Cook and every quarterback has to figure out the line. Okay, nobody's open. Where do I throw the ball? I can't just throw it out of bounds on every single play, especially if we're trailing by a couple touchdowns or something like that. So you're going to have to throw the ball the guys to, who are not wide open, who may just be slightly open. Of course, we talk about scouts. Everybody talks about how in the NFL, well, the windows, as they say, for quarterbacks get a lot smaller. Well, the whole point is, how small does that window have to get before you decide to tuck the ball and run and not throw to the person? That's hard to figure out, and there's no perfect answer to that. To me, the only way you figure it out is frankly by pushing the envelope too far and figuring out from experience, ooh, I better not do that again, that type of deal. That's just my opinion. And once again, I really do believe the best way to get 
the national perspective on all the big time programs in college football is to check out the Locked On College Football podcast, previews of the SEC, Big Ten, ACC, the whole deal, Big Ten. You can find the link to the Locked On College Football Podcast in the description of this podcast as well. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So until next time, I know I owe you all one more this week, so we'll get you one either here on Saturday or Sunday. So until then, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.